Welcome back to week three of Learn Brand MA2, my new weekly tutorial series where I'm going to show you week by week, episode by episode, how you can learn Grand MA2, a professional lighting console used for shows, small and big, around the world every single day. And so far, what you should have learned is how you can download the free software and set it up in a way that you can actually see what you're doing in the virtual console, the Grand MA2 on PC. In the second episode, we looked at how the, the on PC software actually relates to the big uh, full-size console. So in this episode, I wanna show you how you can add lamps or fixtures to your MA3D setup and your Grand MA2 on PC setup. And that will be the basis for you to build any shells that you like of any size, big or small. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So let's jump into today's learning experience. And first of all, I brought up our show over here. So Grand MA2 on PC next to MA3D. If you haven't done that already, if you haven't set this up, go over back to episode number one because you're going to need MA3D definitely today. So let's first go ahead and check out where I want to position five new fixtures. Um, you can't really see anything right now and that's perfect for programming your show because this brightness level is roughly what you will get um, You know in a dark venue and that's perfect That's really cool for getting a feel of how your looks are going to look in a dark room But I mean for kind of checking out the stage that's obviously not a very good brightness level so go over to rendering and then just pull this fader up which is going to set the ambient color to this really bright and ugly white now, second of all, let's check out how we can navigate in MA3D and it's all happening through the right mouse button. So if you go ahead and hold down the right mouse button, you can already see that the cursor is changing and notice how in the upper left hand corner, there's a small menu showing you the different movement types that you can perform while pressing down your right mouse key and moving the mouse. And you can actually change that by moving your mouse wheel. So first of all, let's just go to orbit. Remember, keep the right mouse button pressed and now let's just take a bird's eye view on this one. All right, that's pretty good. Now still keep that right mouse button pressed. I mean, if you let it go like I just did now, just press it again and you can see that the same option is still activated. So now what we want to do is zoom out a little bit. So scroll down to zoom. And now you can see that whenever you move the mouse, you can go further in or further out. Now we're going to scroll up to move, move a little better to, to see a little better. And I'm going back to orbit. And by the way, if you don't have the right mouse button pressed, as you probably expected, um, you can zoom in by using the mouse wheel. All right, let's move this back to move. All right. So what I want to do is I want to place five fixtures on the floor behind this whole setup because orbiting back down, this looks really, really cool. And I want to be able to kind of light this up from the back to give this whole stage more depth in a way. So let's go ahead and make this window small again, go back to the console. And in order to add the fixtures, and fixtures is actually just a general purpose term used in the lighting industry to talk about um, just lamps that, that kind of output the light, but you can also use the word fixture to talk about a hazer or a fog machine, for example, or laser if it's if it seems X controllable. Fixtures is everything that you set up in the console that you will end up controlling through the console. So it's a very generic term, but it's something that I've never really heard um, anywhere outside of the lighting industry. So this is something that you need to know. The word fixture just means object that you can control and set up in the console. So let's go ahead and set that up. Go to setup and then patch and fixture schedule. There it is again. And now what you see over here are different layers. And these layers are just for organizing purposes. It doesn't really matter what order they are in. It's just a way for you to group uh, different different fixtures. 
And it doesn't really matter, you don't have to use this feature, you can just have one layer with all the fixtures in there. But it really helps to have a good and well-organized setup so that you won't confuse yourself later on with too much chaos. So click on that new, go to add layer. Let's just call it behind stage. I wouldn't know the proper term for that. There are some terms to denote where something is and like looks uh, and stuff like that can all be described by the proper language. I yet have to research on that to be honest. So let's click on from library because we want to add this fixture from the fixture library that MA2 ships with. And as you can see here, there is a lot of fixtures, like seriously a ton. So first of all, what we want to do is enter the manufacturer. And what I want to add is a Elation Platinum FLX moving head. So I'm just going to go Elation and you can see while I'm typing, it's already filtering out the correct fixtures. And this is still a lot. So let's just also enter the fixture model and notice how I just have to enter FLX. The search is actually quite flexible, I would say, and it filtered the platinum FLX out even though the word that I entered is actually the second term in here. So that's perfect. Um, the search actually works fairly well, I would say. So click on this extended mode. Uh, fixtures in general can have different modes. And also today I'm just showing you how you can set up these fixtures in MA3D and MA2 so that you can start playing around with them. I won't have the time to go into the technical details of patching and DMX and art and all that stuff. We will actually cover that in a later tutorial for now. I just need you to understand how you can extend your stages to contain more stuff to play around with. So up here we're going to enter a descriptive name. Again, the more you have a good system, the, the less you will confuse yourself later. And I'm just going to name this behind stage one. Now, if you enter a one over here at the end, uh, Grandame will actually count this number up for you. Quantity, we want to add five fixtures. Fixture ID is something that you will use later to actually address the different fixtures and then to set a look for them. We will cover that in the next week with my episode on the programmer. So in here, just have it all start at 201. Uh, channel ID is a feature that I won't be teaching you guys because I feel like it's an old school method that only adds complexity and is, is sort of not really relevant to, to most of the things that I do anyways. And then patch break, again, this is all about DMX addresses, uh, you know, actually patching stuff. So this is something we will cover in a later tutorial. Just leave it as it is. Click on apply and now you can see fixture IDs, perfect, names, perfect. Go ahead and click on close. And if you see this window, just ignore the warning actually and click on yes. Just make sure that your fixtures have these fixture IDs. Otherwise um, that would be sort of too bad. If they do happen to not look the right way, just select them delete the fixtures and then try to add them again. If it still doesn't work, go ahead and ask the group. So click X, click on yes. I want to save the changes even though there are problems with it. And now we don't really see anything in here yet. We'll discover where the fixtures are in a second. First, let's pull up the fixture sheet so we can actually select the fixtures. So click on that yellow ball and then delete window. Click in the left upper empty tile and then go over to sheets and then fixtures. As I explained last week, sheets are sort of lists of objects that are set up in the console. And in here, what it means is that we have a list of all the fixtures that are set up. And if we scroll all the way down, because this is actually sorted by fixture ID, then we can see where is it? Behind stage one, two, three, four, and five. So now that I selected those, you can already see down here that there are some fixtures in here that light up yellow. And that always means that they're selected. So now, um, again, I'm moving around in MA3D. This is sort of the default case. So all the new fixtures are actually positioned at one, uh, at zero, zero, zero in the 3D space. So if you have a stage like that, 
you might not be able to see the fixtures. So in that case, just select them, then move around a little bit until you see them. And now what you can see over here is that we have this yellow, the blue and the red arrow. And whenever we pull on one of these, the fixtures will actually change positions. So now scroll out a little bit, make sure that these are above the stage. Again, use your mouse wheel and then the right mouse button to move around in a way that you can actually see. And now what you wanna do is hold the control button. And what you will see then is that the arrows actually change to these circles. And that just means that you can now rotate the fixture. So in this case, what we want to do is rotate them up. So just hold the left mouse button down onto one of these circles and that will rotate this fixture. Now, a second thing that I wanna show you because in 3D space, it's sometimes hard to position the fixtures correctly. So let's just take back a really nice view at our stage right here. So there's a second trick that you need to know to efficiently position fixtures. If you click on your mouse wheel, you will see this list of different camera views. And now if you scroll up or down, you can see that it changes. Now, one thing that's really important here, if you are in a specific camera view and then you change you know, the, the look of it, it will change that camera view. And like that, you know, if we go to one of these camera views and then for example, move this over, you can see that we can now switch between these two views. So like that, you can actually set up different views onto your stage and customize them. Uh, whenever you change one of these camera views, the changes will be stored in that camera view. And what's really useful here is that if we scroll all the way down to side view, and I'll click on the mouse wheel again to make the window go away, we can now see our fixtures over here. And I think this is actually a lot more useful for positioning the fixtures. So now let's just bring them down to the stage floor and then move them behind the stage. And if they're not selected anymore, if they're not yellow, just go over to MA2 on PC. And now it's yellow again, we can use <clears throat> these arrows to move it behind the stage and then move it down onto the floor. So now we can see our nice little fixtures down there. Let's just scroll into this a little bit. And you can see this, this is sort of a, um, something that you probably have to get used to moving around in this 3D space, but it's something that the more you do it, obviously the better you will get at it. So now what we wanna do as our last action for today is just move this whole group to the left a little bit, then go over here and just select the four last fixtures. As you just saw, you can't really select and deselect something in here. You can just add something to the selection. So. If you want to get rid of that selection, what you want to do is press over here on this button where it says clear, just like that. So now you can go ahead and just select these next four fixtures, move them over like that a little bit, press clear, select the next, the last three fixtures. And now, we have a rough distribution of these five fixtures behind our stage. And with all of that set up, one last trick before I let you go, maximize this again so we can see the rendering, turn down the ambient color all the way. And now to get a rough understanding of what your fixtures look like now that you have it set up, go ahead and select all of these. They will light up yellow, but I mean, that's not too exciting. What you can do to actually see the selected fixtures in MA3D, but also in real life, you can use this highlight function that will actually turn on the dimmer on every fixture that you have selected. So now with the highlight function on, what you can do is clear the selection again. And now you already have a rough idea of what these fixtures look like. And now just imagine them tilting forward, kind of lighting up this beautiful construction 
from the back. I'm really, really looking forward to creating these kind of looks with you. So that's what we will focus on in the next week when I'm gonna show you the programmer and I'm super excited about that. Last thing we need to do before we're done for today is to store our progress. And in order to do that, just go back to backup and depending on whether you want to store your progress in this show, in your very first base show, or maybe you kind of wanna have different steps, it doesn't really matter. You can either go to save show over here or to save show as. What you can also do is actually activate autosave by just clicking on this a few times and then you can see a counter of when your show is going to be stored the next time. I have it off in this case, just so I don't overwrite any changes. Um, so I don't overwrite any of... So the last thing that we need to do is actually store our progress in the show file so that the next time we open up the console, we will have this very setup that we just worked on really hard to get. So go to backup and then save show. I'm actually going to go and save show as, and I'm going to name it episode three. If you want, by the way, you can activate autosave where a timer will go down and then automatically save your progress. That's something I actually do on all of my other show files, just not in this case. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and get subscribed. If you get stuck along the way, make sure to join the Facebook group. New episodes actually coming out every Wednesday, so hit that bell icon to be notified about new uploads. And with that being said, my name is Jonas. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, see you next week.